بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد The worst God worshipped beside Allah سبحانه وتعالى is one dreams is one self and Allah سبحانه وتعالى قال in few ayat of the Quran reminding such aspects قال ومن أضل ممن اتخذ إلهه هواه it does more stray than the person who took his own lust his own whims to be his own idol and God because the idols or the system corrupted system are forged and made by the human being by their own whims so they want to justify validate whatever they desire to get and they make it into a way of a creed and then becomes the system of worship the people of Quraysh they have almost 360 gods there's the 60 gods with these 360 gods they're serving the leaders and uh, defining the social order who did it are these people so they were worshipping in fact themselves Yusuf alayhi salam qala what you worship this is names that you have invented you and your fathers when we're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his beautiful name his beautiful name has a reality has an existence when you say Ar-Rahman you see the manifestation of the mercy all over the creation when you say Al-Qahar when you say Al-Razzaq subhanahu but any other God that they claim, they do not have are like mere names that does not have any reality or existence behind this name. Therefore, the worst to be worshipped is oneself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَهُ Have you seen the one who took as his own whims or her own whims their God? So subhanallah, when a person does such a thing, he will be punished. And the punishment comes from within actually. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لا يظلم أحد Allah does not transgress or be unjust to anyone. So this punishment that يصير ختم ختم على السمع والقلب وغجاوة على البصر Three things that subhanallah cause or like as a result of this aspect as the result of this tapping into worshipping oneself. And of course, uh, no one thinking that they do worship themselves. But actually, this is what it means when someone follows their whims and put, you know, the priority to all their dreams when these dreams, they conflict with the ultimate, you know, purpose of one's life, then the worship is the worship of the hell. So, khatmun ala sam'i wa khatmun ala al-qalbi wa ghishawatun ala al-basar. Seal on the hearing seal on the heart and cover on the eyes and this is means that the light of the guidance will not be able to get to the heart so someone is fully astray and once this person is astray so he's going down the subhanallah down and down into the darkness to become a person that will be you know uh, let's say distant to hellfire well while this person is still walking on this planet earth who's going to be able to guide them after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't you be reminded and he told us about this type of people he said this is our life i mean we live and we die and that's it you know who going to be killing us or cause us to 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 extension is time and you see them, this is what, subhanAllah, the uh, spread, the creed that spread into the world today and in our society is this time. I mean, this time, you know, people, they live, enjoy, and that's it. Entertaining and enjoying and, and such a thing. So, one of the things that all of us uh, share into this aspect, that's why it's very important for us, and in these remaining nights of Laylatul Qadr, we are all invited to renew our Ahad with Allah. 
our ahad with Allah. What is the ahad? Is your oath that you have between you and Allah. You said, I am a believer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then we have a ahad. There's, there's an oath between us. So in Ramadan is the renewal of the oath. So are you able to renew of the oath in the good term to be near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or someone will be distracted, enjoying Ramadan, but not truly uh, trying to change or to reset and restore that relation between him and his creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. The renewal of the oath is the renewal of the iman because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khala ashtara, he has purchased from you your life and your for striving in his sake and also your wealth. Everything that Allah gave you should be dedicated and distant for serving the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in serving the way of Allah, you're going to be honored, you're going to be joyful, you're going to have happiness and tranquility and so on. Today people, they look at life and they live their life through a very narrow window. Very narrow window. A window can be for a person, all what he thinks about is to finish their studies, get degree. Therefore, the whole life, all what they live for is these studies. So the, the windows that they dedicate their life in, it's their study. It becomes like the worship, subhanAllah, in the worship of this dream. And then this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us. This person, he is, you know, worshiping himself. You find the person, all their dedication is for fame. You know, they fame, they do the classes for that. They do acting classes. They pay money. They work so hard, many jobs to be able to access to some, you know, things. They make connection and you see them all of their life. And, and you know very well what I'm talking about. People will find them dedicated to business, people find them dedicated to politics. So whatever they choose as a dream becomes like the window through which they see the life. And then this whole life is confined and restricted in that very narrow window. And subhanAllah, totally, uh, subhanAllah, distracted from the real world out, the, out there. The believer, if you will be like that, then will be worshipper of ourselves. For this region, the Prophet Sallallahu when Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu came in that night and find him in tears and he told him, Ya Rasulullah, uh, why you are doing this for yourself? You know the hadith, he said, should I not be a grateful servant? And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tonight I have, you know, that been revealed to me this ayat, the end of Surah Ali Imran, about pondering in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, woe to the one who will read them and he will not ponder on them. Woe, which is mean like threatening, which is mean if we will not open our eyes and our heart to the big world around us. And this is, we've been talking about it now, you know, uh, yesterday, I think, I believe also in this same perspective, because we are required to renew the oath with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's very important because when you think of the reality of this world, Part of it is hellfire, part of it is paradise. Therefore, renew your oath with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in consideration of the certainty of what you know about the reality of this world. When we do such a thing, it helps you to avoid to have the seal in the ears and the seal in the heart. It avoids you. When you ponder on the creation and you look at it and you see how great and precise it is, and you look at the, its purpose, then you're going to say the first dua that you say, you're going to say, Ya Allah, shield me from the hellfire. That's what Allah told us. And then, Oh Allah, you didn't create they, this for vain, for nothing. And they say, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ultimate purpose, shield us, Ya Allah, from the hellfire. You see, connection, connection. For this reason, Opening our heart and our mind to look big, to live big, and living big is beyond this planet Earth, is beyond this restriction of the dreams that we have. Because even dunya we dreams, you can make it a big dream. Because your dream is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can make whatever study, business and everything, but all within that subhanAllah's fear of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you're going to be a righteous person who's very active in this life and successful also in the worldly life. Luqman, uh, alayhi salam, you know, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned how he had his advice to his child. Look what he said to his son. The first thing is to open his mind, to help him see the whole universe from the big picture. He didn't tell him pray and do this in a very confined, restrictive way. No. This is the first thing after the non shirk, which is that the base and the core and the foundation. In anything like a grain of mustard or like an atom is like hidden inside a stone, whatever you can imagine in this earth, or will be whatever in, in this earth hidden, or in the heaven, Allah will bring it forth. This is subhanAllah the teaching, the teaching to open the mind. Yeah, to open the heart, to see big, to see the creation. That's what is going to give you the izzah. That's what's going to give you the power in your heart. You are with the one who has all this creation, the one who had the whole power, the one who had the all knowledge, the one who has subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had the power of subjugating everything, all the creation. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْقَهَارُ وَالْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ This is what is going to help you. But when you always look at small dreams, only that, then you're going to be very, subhanAllah, careless about this big word, and then you're going to invite that seal to be into your heart. If you have that seal, you will never be able to have khushu in salah. Never. Why? Because you are in a very small world, already you invited that seal to be in your heart. Musa, alayhi salam, when Fir'aun was telling him, Fir'aun thinking that he is God, Qalama, who is your Lord? Huh? The Lord of the heaven and the earth. So he made him to look big. That's why he was like bewildered. He was like confused. And the other ayah, The one who gave the creation for everything. And then he gives his guidance, which means include you, ya Fir'aun. You see. For these ayat help us to reflect and help us to really a changed way how we step into this world, how we think about our, uh, you know, uh, life, and how we think about, you know, uh, re re let's say, reiterating our oath with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have the Luqman, the story of Luqman, or the way how Luqman, uh, alayhi salam, was addressing to his uh, son, how Musa, alayhi salam, was doing that and you can see all the idea that we mentioned some of them yesterday into the uh, into the khatira of the prophets and many of idea and look at the idea of the prophets and this is how someone the believer should be therefore we are saying that open up to the absolute existence around you that's how the way you will be able you will be able to avoid that seal in the heart to avoid that seal in the heart because remember, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this ayah, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ أَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمِ وَخَتَمَ عَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِ So, if you go to that path, then we're inviting the seal. The only way to cleanse that seal is in this looking out and pondering in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited us to ponder. And the best way to do it is through the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften our time for the dhikr. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to instill the, uh, let's say, the habit of the dhikr to be from the dhikrin and to be from the munibin and to be able, insha'Allah ta'ala, to be aware that we need to uh, change or like uh, review our oath and renew our oath with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially that we're going to be uh, soon in Laylatul Qadr. And today also we have, inshallah, the opportunity to have Laylatul Qadr, inshallah ta'ala, ya Rabbi. Inshallah to the salah. Wa jazakumullah khairan wa barakallahu fiqh. Tfadl.